the scope of what we can do in internal developer platforms is almost infinite. Any area of software development can be made easier for those who are not uh, specialized in it. Now, we already explored how to add services into internal developer platforms. If you missed it, please watch that video. We already saw how one can easily run an application and the database without knowing everything there is to know about either of those. Today, we are going to explore how to convert infrastructure experience into services that can be consumed through an internal developer platform. Now, infrastructure is a very wide subject and I could not present everything in a single video. So we'll focus on a specific use case. We'll enable everyone to create, operate and destroy Kubernetes clusters. However, we will not do that through the usual means. Typically, we would use something like a rancher through which we would create a cluster by selecting a few options, filling in a few fields and clicking a button. Actually, that's exactly what we'll do, but not through Rancher or any similar tool. There are a few reasons for not going down the usual path. To begin with, I want to be able to customize the solution by exposing things that matter to others and hiding those that are necessary, but only experts are proficient in. For example, very few care about subnets and VPCs and storage and so on and so forth. Those are important but not for everyone. On the other hand, others might care where the cluster is running and whether it should have small, medium or big nodes. The end solution will differ from one organization to another and it's up to you to figure out what your customers need. To be clear, in this context, everyone else working in your company is a potential customer. So I want to have an experience custom made for people who will use the solution. I want to fulfill their needs and not the needs of infrastructure experts. They are people who should create those services. Further on, I want people to be able to use any type of interface they want. If some like a graphical user interface, we should be able to provide it. If others prefer writing YAML files, that should be an option as long as those are easy to write. Now, the important thing to note is that the solution should follow best practices no matter the interface used to consume services. In this scenario, I will guess that the best practice is not to create infrastructure directly, but to store manifests in Git repositories and use GitOps to apply them. There are probably a few other guidelines, but for now, what matters is custom interfaces and GitOps. Now, let's take a sneak peek into the solution. A user goes to a user interface clicks a button to create a cluster, fills in a few fields, and clicks another button to execute the process. From there on, the user is redirected to a different screen that contains all the information he or she needs. And that's it, from the end user perspective at least. Now, behind the scenes, quite a few things are happening. A new manifest was created and pushed to a Git repository. Argo CD detected the change and applied it. Crossplane started creating everything needed to run a cluster. The information was sent back to port, the UI, so that the user can see the progress and connect to the cluster. Similarly, the user can delete the cluster and the process reverses. The file was removed from a Git repository. Argo CD detected the change and deleted the cluster resource and Crossplane did the heavy lifting to remove all the real resources associated with that cluster. With something like that, we can accomplish two things. We can make it easy for users, developers, without sacrificing any of the practices infrastructure experts, SREs typically, care about. Developers are autonomous, best practices are followed, and infrastructure folks can focus on creating services that others can consume instead of reacting to Jira tickets. Now, let's see how to create such a solution. There are a few components that we'll need to combine to create the solution. To begin with, we need a control plane that will be used to create clusters or any other infrastructure. I already have a cluster that detects as a control plane. It's a Kubernetes cluster that runs Crossplane and Argo CD is the same one 
we explored in the previous video, that one. What's new is that now I have cross-plane compositions that enable people to define clusters easily, just as I used compositions in the previous video to define applications with databases. I will not go into details about cross-plane compositions since I already did that. Check it out if you're new to it. And now comes the new part. I have a template of sorts that can be used to create a new cluster. So let me output cluster template YAML. And as you can see, it's nothing fancy. It's just a claim with a few fields that will be modified through user choices that we will see soon, very, very soon. Next, I created a port blueprint that defines a data model that will be used to represent a cluster in the UI. It contains properties that mostly mimic those in the crossplane composition. It would be nice, it would be amazing if port would discover those automatically, but for now, we need to define them manually. Now, before we move on, let me replace the cluster blueprint that comes out of the box with the one we just saw. I'm going to do that in port UI, and that's a beauty of port. Even though it comes with some commonly used blueprints, like in this case cluster, we are in full control over the data model. Next, we need a mechanism that will enable people to just say, I want a cluster with those properties. To do that, we need an action import that will trigger the process that will make that happen. So I created a port action that does just that. It contains user input fields that will be used by others to decide what type of a cluster they need. This also mimics cross-plane composition and the blueprint. And I think it's a bit too much to have three definitions that are almost the same, but hey, nobody is perfect. What matters is that this port action will trigger GitHub actions in a specific organization and repository by executing the workflow create cluster YAML. The important note here is that the trigger is create, giving a clear indication to port what we want. And what we want is to create something. Just as before, let me add that action to the cluster blueprint before we move on. Now, port actions are not really performing any actions. Instead, they're triggering actions somewhere else. In this case, that's GitHub Actions. So let's take a look at the workflow defined in createcluster.yaml. This is a very, very simple workflow. Simple is good, right? It is just checking out the code of that repo, executing create cluster script, and finally it pushes the changes back to the repo. And the script, create cluster script, is simple as well. It copies the templated claim to the infra directory and it replaces the placeholders with the values generated in user inputs in port. That's all there is to it when creating clusters is concerned. Now, we should also have a mechanism to delete clusters following the same logic. That means that we need a port action that will trigger GitHub actions in a specific organization repository by executing a workflow. So let's take a very, very quick look at the port action, cluster delete action. And there is nothing special here either. We have the name of the cluster as the user input and the invocation that will trigger the GitHub Actions workflow delete cluster YAML. So let me quickly, quickly, quickly add that action to port as well. And we're almost done. The only thing missing is the GitHub workflow. This one also starts by checking out the code of the repo. Further on, it simply deletes the file that defines the cluster and pushes changes back to repo. You will notice that this is pure GitOps. We are not interacting with the control plane directly. Instead, all we're doing is generating files and pushing them to Git repo, or when deletion is concerned, we are removing files from the repository. Now, let's see all this in action. Imagine that I am a user of the internal developer platform and that I need a cluster. Here's what I would do. I would go to the self-service screen and click the Create button in the Create Cluster section. Further on, I would type the name of the cluster I want to create. I could select the provider and the size of the nodes or type the minimum number of nodes, but in this case, I will leave the default values. I will leave it as is. Now, you might be wondering, why is the provider set to Sivo? 
and not AWS or Azure or Google Cloud or some other provider? Well, you'll have to keep wondering since that's for now a secret. I will explain the choice in one of the upcoming videos. For now, you need to trust me that the choice is not random. I have very good reasons for using Sivo for a cluster that is called Previews. Okay, enough rumbling. Let me click the execute button and well, there is nothing else for me to do as a user of the platform except maybe watch the progress. Now, as a person who does want to know what's happening, as a person who does not pretend to be only the user of the platform, I could, for example, pull the latest changes from the repo with git pull. We can see that a new file previews all one cluster YAML was added to the repo. That's the crossplane claim manifest that was generated by GitHub Actions triggered by port. Let me double check that it is indeed correct by outputting that file. We can see that the values match those entered in port. Now, since I'm paranoid when doing something for the first time, I will also check Argo CD UI. And you can see that I'm entering the UI for the first time uh, because I have to log in, right? I did not log in before. Anyways, after logging in and navigating to the production infra application, we can see that among other things, the newly created cluster claim was detected by Argo CD and synchronized with the control plane cluster. In turn, Crossplane created the composite resource, which in turn extended into all the resources required to run a cluster in Sivo. Since, as I already mentioned, I am paranoid and distrustful person, I will double check whether all that is true by outputting the claims directly with kubectl. So kubectl and space is infra, get cluster claims, and you can see that the claim is there, and we can see that the control plane and the node pool were created. We can also see all the individual resources that were created by outputting Sivo Kubernetes objects and releases. And there we go. It's all there. The cluster was created and configured and all the third party apps needed to run that cluster to serve its purpose were installed. Now, there is one more thing that I forgot to mention. While I was setting up the solution, I also installed port agent in the control plane cluster. That's the agent that monitors resources in the cluster and feeds the information back to port. That's the one that enabled me while I was pretending to be the user of the platform to see the progress of the cluster creation. Let's take a quick look at it by outputting port YAML. Now, this is almost the same configuration we used in the previous video and contains things that are not relevant for today's subject. The part that matters is that it maps cluster claims to the Blueprint cluster as well as specific properties of that Blueprint to the fields of the claim resources. That works for almost all the information we need to display in port except for kubeconfig, which is stored in a secret. So there is a second entry that maps secrets with a specific type and feeds the port's kubeconfig property with the values from dot data dot kubeconfig. We'll see why that matters in a moment, in a second. For now, let me give you a quick high level flow of what happened. We have a control plane that manages everything. It's a Kubernetes cluster with cross plane and Argo CD. Above it is the user interface port that allows users to create clusters and quite a few other things. When the action is triggered, a cluster is created. Port in turn triggered GitHub actions that generated uh, the manifest and pushed it to the repo. From there on, Argo CD synchronized the desired manifest with the control plane cluster. Since that resource was a crossplane claim, crossplane created all the resources, which in this case consist of Sivo Kubernetes cluster together with configuration and third party apps that should run in that cluster once it's operational. Port agent, in turn, is configured to watch for cluster claims and secrets in the control plane cluster and feed the information back to the UI so that end users can see what's going on and retrieve cube config. Creating clusters is great, but not the only thing we might need. Platform users might want to see the status of the clusters and other relevant information, whatever that is. Also, there should be a way to connect to the cluster, and for that, we need a way to retrieve kubeconfig. 
all that information was ingested into port by the agent running in the control plane cluster. So if I would like to connect to the cluster, I can just copy kubeconfig from port. I will store the value in the kubeconfig value variable. Now, there's a tiny issue we have at our hands. The config is encoded and we need to decode it. I could have set the agent to ingest decoded value of the config, but port does not preserve formatting and new lines. So the result would be useless, right? It's HTML mess. So here's a message to port folks. Please, please, please add the option to copy raw values that were not formatted by HTML. Nevertheless, this is not a big issue since all we have to do is output the value, pass it to base64 decode and store it in a file. Could it be better for end users? Yeah, yes it could. Is it a big deal? Probably not. Now, as a test that everything works and that I can indeed connect to the newly created cluster, I will execute kubectl kubeconfig is kubeconfig uh, previews yaml and I want to get all the namespaces. The output shows not only that I can indeed connect to the newly created cluster, but also that it is already running the third party apps like schema hero, traffic, crossplane and so on and so forth. So it is fully operational cluster for preview environments, which I will explain in one of the upcoming videos. Now, I could start deploying applications to the newly created cluster directly, but that would be silly. We will do something much, much better, but not in this video. Also, we did not implement ingestion of related data like nodes, ports, and etc. right? That's coming in one of the follow-up videos as well. To celebrate that everything works as expected will destroy the cluster we just created. Destruction in small doses is good for the soul. So let's go for it. Let's do it. And to do that, I'll go back to port and click the delete the cluster button next to the representation of the new cluster. As an additional precaution, I have to type the name of the cluster I want to delete. So ready? Let's go, delete. Now, I'm sure that you know what happened, right? That button triggered GitHub Actions workflow that deleted the manifest from the repo, and we can confirm that by pulling the latest changes with git pull. And there you go, the file is gone. As a result, Argo City detected the change and removed the claim from the control plane cluster. So let me do the last confirmation by executing kubectl namespace if I get cluster claims, and the claim is indeed gone, as are all the resources associated with it. So what happened? Well, it's more or less the same logic as before. We instructed port that we want to delete the cluster, port triggered GitHub actions that deleted the manifest, Argo CD detected the change and removed the claim, Crossplane removed all the resources associated with the claim, and finally, the information about the cluster was removed from port UI, thus closing the circle. And that's it. Now you have almost everything you need to manage your own infrastructure through your internal developer platform. I use Kubernetes clusters as an example, but you should be able to adapt the solution to any type of infrastructure. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Cheers.